public defender is an attorney employed by the community and responsible for giving legal aid without cost to any person who seeks it and is financially unable to employ private counsel. It is his duty to defend those accused of crime until the issue is decided in a court of law. The first public defender's office in the United States was opened in January 1913. Over the years, other offices were opened. And today, that handful has grown to a network, a network of lawyers cooperating to protect the rights of our clients. We defended a youngster on a first-degree murder charge against odds we wouldn't want to face again in a hurry, I assure you. One of those cases a lawyer calls a dead one, a lost cause. Gil Bowman, one of the deputies, drew the assignment. Robert DeMarco? That's right. Gil Bowman, public defender's office. Did you uh, kill this man, Betty Jarrell? No. Well, sit down, let's talk about it a little bit. You want a lawyer, don't you? Sure, I want a lawyer. Well, I'm sorry I'm not from one of the big private law firms, Al. But we've got a pretty fair record in cases like this, too. Well, I don't mean anything personal by it, Mr. Bowman, but a jail lawyer. Jail lawyers are free, so they can't be any good, huh? Well, not exactly. What I mean is they've got me in a real spot, the cops. I don't know who'd be able to get me off. Sit down, Al. Let me tell you something. Go ahead, sit down. You know, in a way, Al, uh, you're kind of fortunate. You see, we've had a lot of experience in murder cases, and we work full time at anything we handle. But I've got no proof I didn't do it. You think I stand a chance without any proof? Well, let's hold that for a minute. Now I want you to tell me the whole story, Al, right from the beginning. Well, this guy they say I killed is Maud Bettigeon. Now, wait, wait a minute. Start from way back. When you were a kid, you know, where you lived, your folks, who you palled around with, you know. Al DeMarco's background wasn't very good. Other side of the tracks, broken home, the wrong company. But when he was 20, things took a decided turn for the better. He managed to get a job and he got married. Girl by the name of Anna Marie Stelic, a waitress. On what they both earned, they kept up a small apartment on West 12th Street. And everything went fine for about six months. Couldn't wait. For what? You're not very bright, are you? To kiss you, Dopey. So, kiss me. <laughs> no fooling out. What happened? Four o'clock. Mr. Fetterman says, Albert. <laughs> he always calls me Albert. He says, you can go home now. Just like that. Okay. Who knows? Maybe he's getting to like me. <laughs> I never thought he would, but maybe he is. What do you expect at these prices, Tyrone Power? I've decided he's going to look just like you. You decided. Mm -hmm. And what if he turns out to be a she? You're entitled to a refund, I suppose. Mm, I could decide to have twins. Bite your tongue. Triplets. <laughs> look, he, she, one, two, three, four, five. What difference does it make? As long as it's healthy. Give me a healthy kiss. Somebody said I said a healthy one. You know, what? I just got a crazy idea. The way Fetterman's coming around the first thing in the morning, I think I'll hit him a raise. Flabler hit you right over the head. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, honey? It, it's a telegram for you. <laughs> what are you scared of? Open it. Slack season. Do not report to work until further notice. Elroy J. Fetterman. That's crazy. Slack season. We're busy as a beehive. He just put an extra guy on this morning. Oh. <laughs> I'd like to kill him. Honey, it isn't the end of the world. No, we're going to have a baby and I get canned, that's all. You'll find another job. 
You don't remember so good, do you? How long I looked before I found this thing with Fetterman? How many places turned me down because I've got a record? How long do you think I can wait this time with you having a baby? I, I can work another four months, Al, maybe five. Oh, we got plenty of time. You'll find something, I know you will. Find anything? No. Why don't you go see Maud Bettiger? I've asked you so many times. Don't ask me again, Anna Marie, will you? Why? Why not? He's always treated me like dirt from the first time he saw me. Is that a reason? All right. You want me to say it? I'll say it! Because he killed my sister, that's why. Driving a car 90 miles an hour, stinking drunk, running into a tree? That's the reason. I'd rather be a garbage collector. Then be a garbage collector, be anything else! <laughs> I don't know how much longer I can keep working. Honey, I'll find something tomorrow, I promise you. Only not from him. Help me set the table. You go get some rest, I'll take care of everything. <laughs> Dog's age. How's Anna Marie? She's in the hospital. She lost the baby last night. Oh, that's a shame. And here I was thinking that you were doing well enough to be shopping for a present for her. Yeah. Is Mort Bettiger around? In the office. Hm. He'll probably die laughing. I'm going to ask him for a job. Do you want me to talk to him, Al? No, thanks, Pat. I'd like to. You see, I never told you this, but the night the accident happened, he called me and I was busy. And then he called your sister Evie. Kind of makes me feel like a big sister to you, I guess. Let me talk to him. I want to. Oh, that's good of you, Pat, but no thanks. You and he still go on? I couldn't stand the uncertainty. How can you stand him? Oh, he has a certain amount of charm. Yeah, like a vulture. In case I'm on the floor, Charlie, the Red Ball messenger will pick this up at 4 o'clock. Goes to Leland Cameron. Spending $20,000 on a diamond bracelet for his wife. The fool. Wife, sweetheart, so long as he pays for it. Well, here goes. I'll see you. been with you, Al. Oh, fine, fine. Uh, I, uh, I quit my job the other day. I figured it was about time I started doing bigger things. I'd like to work for you if you've got an opening, Mort. Don't have a thing right now, Al. Well, I thought with the holiday season coming on, you could use an extra salesman. I'm pretty good at selling, Mort. With the type of merchandise we handle here? Well, uh, maybe I could start as a shipping clerk or something. Work myself up when I get to know the ropes. Why don't you drop in after the first of the year, Al? I need the job now, Mort. I need it pretty bad. See me after the first. Isn't there something I can do now? Al, I'm a little busy. Would you mind if... Why don't you say what you mean? There's no job for me here now or after the first or ever. Why don't you say it instead of... All right, I'll say it. We don't hire young hoodlums in this office. Young punks who go around with nothing in their head but bumming around and hanging out in pool rooms. Well, things are different now, Mort, since I got married. Get out! Get out before I throw you in the alley, where you belong. Uh, I, I'm going to lunch. It was my wife's idea to come over here and ask you for a job, not mine. But I took her to a hospital last night. She lost her baby. So I came over here to see you, so I could go back and tell her she had a good idea at work, that you gave me a job, so she'd feel better. And you came through all right. 
just like I expected. Thanks. I didn't, uh, I didn't know about your, your wife. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I'll... Look out, the tears will stain your ten-buck necktie. Wait a minute. What are you doing? I want to talk to you in private. I'd like to help you, but the best I can do is let you deliver an order for me. I'll pay you five dollars. Thanks for nothing. I need a steady job, not just one order to deliver. There'll be more when the holiday season starts. Enough to keep you busy full time, maybe. That doesn't sound so bad, does it? Well, no, I... Look, Al, you come back in about a half hour, about 12.30. You knock at the back door and I'll bring out the package. Come in through the alley with the rest of the trash, huh? So half past 12, he hands me the package and he's real palsy-walsy. He even says I could use his car to make the delivery. So I pull up in front of my house. As I get out of the car, two guys I've never seen before walk up to me. You, Al DeMarco? What's up? Police officers. What do you want? Whose car are you driving, Al? Well, this belongs to a friend of mine, Mort Bettiger. What's in the package you got there next to you on the seat? Oh, this? I'm delivering it. That's what he loaned me the car from Mort Bettiger to make a delivery. Who are you delivering it to, Al? Mrs. Simmons, Mrs. Walter Simmons at... The sales slip says Mr. Leland Cameron. Well, there must be a mistake someplace, officer. This package goes to Mrs. Simmons. It's a money clip. A money clip? It says here it's a diamond bracelet. 20,000 bucks plus tax. You must have gave me the wrong package. What'd you do with it, Al? I didn't do anything with it. What are you talking about? It'll go a lot easier for you. This is crazy. I tell you, it's a mistake. Ask Mr. Bettiger. We don't have to. What do you mean you don't have to? He already told us you stole it. And the car. So I wind up doing 14 months for heisting a car and a bunch of diamonds I never even saw. 14 months? That was mainly for the car. The bracelet, that was all on Bettiger's say-so. They couldn't prove that I sold it or stashed it away. All I know, Mr. Bowman, he's the one who took it, not me. Yeah. Well, I guess that doesn't make much difference now, Al. Let's get on with the killing. Oh, no, wait a minute. Uh, first, uh, tell me about your wife while you were serving time. She, uh, she come out of the hospital all right? Yeah. She came out all right. She waited for me, that's the main thing. She even went back to work, saved the money. You know, I'll never forget the first day I got out. She had a swell supper for me. <laughs> she even baked a cake. Happy New Year, darling. Happy New Year? Beginning in April? Beginning of the year for us. But it wasn't a Happy New Year. Did you get a job? Yeah, sure. I wrote to my congressman, and he made me secretary of the treasury. Ah, oh, there were a few places that looked like they were going to put me on, but then they started asking questions like, where'd you work last? And I told them, Elroy Fetterman's. And they said, when? And I said, over a year ago, I had to tell them. Then they wanted to know what I've been doing since then. And that did it. Well, well, look who's here. What do you want? I want to talk to you. I've got nothing to say to you. Sure you've got nothing to say to me. What's there to say to me after framing me? Making a jailbird out of me? So I can't get a job? So I can't even support my wife? Framing you? That's what I said, framing me. You've got $20,000 worth of diamonds framing me. Why, you dirty little crook, get out of here. I'm gonna take those 14 months with me, you're high. Get me the police! Let go of me, let go of me, I'll kill him! I'll kill him! We got the cops on the phone, I broke away and ran out the back door. But she did say, in front of witnesses, I'll kill him. But I didn't do it. I never even saw him again after that. All I know is the next morning the cops arrest me. They say I killed Bettiger in his office by stabbing him with a letter opener the night before about half past nine. Did you ever touch that letter opener, Al? Leave any prints on it, I mean? I've never even seen the thing in my life. But I can't prove I don't have any prints on it. The cops say it's gone, disappeared. They said I stashed it away someplace. 
Uh, about the time Bettiger was killed, Al, where were you? Uh, I was out walking, walking the streets by myself. What streets? Oh, down by the markets, the wholesale markets. Anybody see you? Did you meet anybody? Did you stop in any place for coffee, cigarettes, paper, anything? No, it was pretty late at night. Everything was closed. I don't remember seeing anybody I knew or anybody seeing me. All I know, Mr. Bowman, I didn't do it. I know the police say that I have a record and I have a motive for doing it, but believe me, I didn't do it. Somebody else did it. Bowman put investigators to work trying to dig up Patricia Murray and an alibi witness for his client. But he drew a blank on both counts. The jury was all picked and the trial set to start the next morning when one of the investigators came in to report that he had found Patricia Murray. Miss Murray? Yes. Uh, my name's Bowman. I'm Al DeMarco's lawyer. Do you mind if I come in? No, by all means. Thank you. I've read the story in the paper, Mr. Bowman. Won't you sit down? Thank you. The, uh... The DA has an open and shut case, Miss Murray. About the only chance of saving the kid is to dig up another suspect. That's why I... Haven't you found anybody? Anybody at all? You're our only hope. If you can think of anyone who... who even might have wanted to kill Bettiger, anyone the police and I might have overlooked, I, I sure wish you'd tell me. Nobody. I told that to the police when they asked me. Oh, you've talked to them? When? A day before yesterday, when I got back to town. You see, um, I've been living at the Ardmore in Atlantic City since, uh, all oh, about six weeks before Mr. Bettiger passed on. I knew the police would be interested in talking to anyone who knew Mr. Bettiger, so I went over to police headquarters voluntarily. And? Well, I guess I didn't have anything of importance to tell them. And I did want to help Al so much. Isn't there some hope? I don't know. You, uh, your husband in town with you? My husband? I'm not married, Mr. Bowman. Oh, didn't I see a wedding ring? No. Or maybe it was just an ordinary ring turned around. Huh? Oh, you mean this? Well, I've lost a little weight and it keeps slipping. Say, that is a beauty. Engaged then, huh? Walter McDowell, hotel man, Atlantic City. Well, congratulations to you both. You won't mind taking this, will you, Miss Murray? A subpoena? What for? Character witness for Al DeMarco. Law says I have to leave you the fee, too. Well, I... Trials upset me, Mr. Bowman. Do you really need me? I mean, will it help? Well, I'm afraid it won't save the boy's life. But in a case like this, I'm not overlooking anything. I'm, I'm having his priest down, a few of the neighbors, everyone I can get. All right, I'll be there. Thank you very much, Miss Murray. I guess all we can do now is hope for the best. I'll pray for him. Well, I phoned the hotel, but she's hiding something. I'd bet my whole career on it, and I'm going to find out what it is. When trial starts in the morning. Look, uh, take over for me, will you? Just till after lunch. You know the case. All right, leave me the file. I'll work on it tonight. Thanks, Bart. Matthews. Oh, this is Bowman, Ruthie. Find out what time I can get a plane out here for Atlantic City, will you? I thought you checked Atlantic City. I did. But we're playing with a man's life, Bart. I got to check in person. <laughs> I'm in the hotel manager's office in Atlantic City. Uh, what's happening? We're losing it, Gil. I'm putting on the character witnesses now, and you know how much help they'll be. You get anything on Patricia Murray? Uh, the hotel records show she was registered here at the time Bettiger was killed. But get this. She had dinner sent up to her room every night except the night of the murder. Check. Anything else? She told me she was engaged to a hotel man here named Walter McDowell. I checked. And there is no hotel man here with a name anything like Walter McDowell. Now, hold on to your hat. She was engaged to Mr. Morton Bettiger. Well, what do you know? You're sure of that. Telephone records show she put in, uh, oh, 15 or 16 person-to-person -person calls to him in New York, which he refused to accept. Woman scorned, huh? Sure, but she could say that he was a busy man and that he called her back every time. 
I know, but hit her with it, Bart. Hit her. Hit her with everything I've told you. Try to break her down. It's our only chance to save that kid's life. Yes, I admit it, but... In fact, you hated him. You hated him so much you killed him. Isn't that so, Miss Murray? No. We weren't on good terms, but I didn't hate him. I loved him. And I didn't kill him. Your Honor, once more I must ask, how long is counsel going to keep this up? He has had his answers over and over again. And I repeat the motion I made almost three hours ago, that the witness be excused and this entire line of questioning be stricken from the record. The jury is instructed to disregard such testimony in arriving at its verdict. And the witness is excused. If Your Honor, please. I ask that the witness remain for additional testimony. Who are you? My associate, Your Honor. Mr. Bowman of my office. He's been out of town trying to find some new evidence. Well, has he found any? Yes, Your Honor, I have. Uh, Mr. Matthews, uh, would you hand me the murder weapon, please? It's in the briefcase, Mr. Matthews. Thank you. The murder weapon, Your Honor. I have it wrapped for two reasons. A, to protect the fingerprints. And B, because a blood-stained letter opener isn't a very pleasant sight to behold. Look at it, Miss Murray. Shall I unwrap it for you? Let you have another look at the lifeblood of the man you say you loved? I didn't kill him. Oh, yes. The stains are still there. Are they on your hands, Miss Tell him Mel didn't do Hold it. Hold up your hands. Tell him he didn't do it, Pat. Hold up your hands if you're innocent. Yes. I killed him. For years he tortured me. One minute swearing he loved me. And the next minute running around with other women. We were finally engaged to be married. But he didn't stop. In Atlantic City, he drank too much and bragged that the diamond he gave me, this one, was part of the bracelet that Al DeMarco went to jail for stealing. He framed Al. I told him I hated him for it. Then he called me every vile name he could think of and went back to New York. But I couldn't stop warning him. It drove me out of my mind, I guess. I killed him. <laughs> yes? The district attorney on one, Mr. Matthews. He's called you twice in the past 15 minutes. All right, I'll take it. Matthew speaking. He did? Well, it was an oversight, I'm sure. Yes, I'll tell him right away. Our friend, the able prosecutor, says that in the excitement, you walked off with the evidence, the murder weapon. Oh, yes, I did. But take it down to him right away, will you, Gil, before anything happens to it? Okay. Got an envelope? Oh, sure. I want that handkerchief back, Bart. Cost me a buck fifty. Careful of the fingerprints. Ah, look, I've handled murder weapons before. Why, you lunatic! Yes, it was just a piece of wood. Risky business for an attorney, and Gil Bowman knew it. But since it did bring about justice for all concerned, I guess for once the end justified the means. Al DeMarco got a good job after his release. And he and his wife and two children are looking forward to owning their own home. Congratulate Public Defender Nye and his staff for outstanding achievement in the cause of justice.